Hello my 3D printer peeps. I'm here sitting with the Creality K1. I am going to clean and lubricate the rods. You can follow along with your K1, K1 Max, or K1C. When you unpacked your K1 series printer, you should have received a tube similar to this. On some portion of the tube, it says metal grease. Those of you who own Bamboo Lab printers, such as the P1 series or X1 series, may have received a small package like this, and early adopters may have received one that looks like this. It's silver with a printed sticker on it. You may use any one of these. Unfortunately, I do not have a recommendation on how often or when to do this. At the time of this recording, I'm not aware of any error message that will inform you when the vibrations on the hot end are different from the vibrations detected during the calibration process. However, on bamboo machines, such as the P1 and X1 series, you will in fact get an error message when the vibrations detected have changed from the time it was calibrated, and you will be asked to rerun that calibration. On the K1 series, I simply suggest you use your best judgment to do this on a semi-regular basis. However, do not overdo it because we do not need sticky substances all over our printers that can present problems that us 3D printers do not need in our lives. This is my own personal beloved K1. I am accustomed to hearing it work on a daily basis and my ears are trained to recognize the normal sounds of this machine. However, the other day it started vibrating in such a way that I wasn't accustomed to hearing. I took this as a sign that my K1 was reaching out for help and decided to clean and lubricate its rods. After doing this, the unusual vibration sound went away. I recommend you become accustomed to the sounds of your printers, spend time training your ear to what they sound like when they're happy, that way you can notice what they sound like when they're not happy and asking you for help. Let's go ahead and get this done. Those of you with K1, K1C, K1 Max, and any other K1 printer that may exist at the time you are watching this video can follow along as the process will be the same. I will be using the grease that came with the K1 printer. If you cannot find that grease and you do have Bamboo Lab lubricant lying around, go ahead and use that. Please keep in mind, many of these printers come with a thermal paste and a lubricating grease. Some of them may even be in identical looking packages. Please read the labeling and make sure you are not using thermal grease to do this. If it's time to clean and lubricate your rails, it may also be a good time to wipe down your machine. I keep IPA in a quality spray bottle. Cheap dollar store spray bottles are the bane of my existence and I do recommend you get a quality bottle like Zep because quality bottles provide a nice, fine, consistent mist and actually spray when you press the trigger. And here is IPA, which to common folk is isopropyl alcohol. So when you hear us nerds say IPA, it's alcohol. This is 99%. You can use 70%, 80%, 91%, or whatever you get at the Mart of Wall or the Dollar Bush. However, I use 99%. I get them in cases of a dozen from Amazon, and it works well for me. You'll see how nicely this sprays. I use Scott's shop towels. I get these from the Mart of Wall also. They are fantastic because they are strong and they do not shed. I'm gonna wipe down my bed. I'm gonna wipe down inside the machine. Unless you're a Gumby, you're gonna have a hard time reaching all the way back. Just get what you can. I wipe down my hot end. I wipe down the inside walls. Clean up the fins on the fan in the background. And the air duster is good for this. I'm going to bunch up a little ball like this so that I can push down on the side here and wipe out this area of the machine without having to put any pressure at all. Look at me, people. Without putting any pressure at all on the hotbed. I just simply stick it down here and just brush it around kind of like a dust mop. So now, having done a better job than I just did, your machine is no longer full of dust bunnies that are going to stick and gloop all over these rails that you just cleaned and lubricated. A good idea to help avoid that is to also blow it out with an air duster. I will show you something else I like to use, and that is this, a dollar store sponge. 
You can't tell from here. My smooth bed has been wiped down with copious amounts of IPA. You may not be able to tell from here, but it still looks kind of bad. So what I'm going to do is take this dollar store sponge, saturate it with H2O, water to us lay folk, wipe up all the water I spilled on the floor. That was gross. And then I'm going to wipe down the bed with it. The reason I'm doing this with the sponge and the water instead of IPA is because IPA evaporates very quickly and won't give the materials on the bed, such as your glue stick and hairsprays and God knows whatever else is on it, the time to properly dissolve and absorb into the sponge. So using water, which is slow dissolving and a nice soft sponge, I can slowly let everything on this hotbed absorb the water dissolve and then absorb into my cheap dollar store sponge and because it's a cheap dollar store sponge when i'm done i can just throw it away i then wipe it down one last time with my super awesome scott's towels and i don't know if you can tell but my bed is beautiful now that the printer is clean and the bed is clean let's go back to the actual point of this video which is the rails let's go ahead and start with this one Make sure your print bed is lowered. If it's not lowered, lower it yourself. Open up your little tube of grease. Take your two fingers, fold the blue towel over it, and put some right there over your fingers. Then use your fingers to wrap it around the rod and wipe it up and down. You probably won't reach completely around this rod, but you can probably get pretty close. You will see you've not only lubricated the rod, you've removed all kinds of disgusting filth. Once you've removed all kinds of disgusting filth, fold your cloth again and repeat the process. Do the same thing on the other side. Should you notice after cleaning the rails that there is excessive buildup of the grease on any portion of the rail, go ahead and use an advanced high access tip of Q to clean that off. Simply get in there and rub down that rail to remove any bits and blobs on that rail. To your surprise, you may notice the tip of Q still comes off with some black gunk on it. If you had any difficulty reaching underneath the bed's mount, this is a good way to go ahead and make sure you can get in there. We will go ahead and do the same up top. If your hot end is in the way, simply hook the bar, put your fingers on the hot end, and carefully move it out of the way. Using the same technique, I'm going to put some metal grease on the paper towel and I'm going to clean this bar right here. When you do this, do make sure you are not getting grease on the belt or stressing out that belt in any way. Another thing I'd like you to do is make sure you are actually greasing the rod. You may notice the black gunk on your towel is not where you greased the rod. Please be sure you are actually putting the grease on the rod. Again, we are going to do this twice and we're going to use the tips of Q to get in the little crevices and to make sure we don't have blobs of grease anywhere on this rail. Repeat the process on the other side. Put your finger on the rail, put your finger on the side of the hot end and together forward and to the side. This will expose the rail on the other side. Now that you're comfortable moving your hot end, shush up and go along with it. Listen carefully. You are comfortable moving your hot end. We will go ahead and clean and grease up these rails on the hot end. There are two of them. Use the same technique to put a little grease on the Scott's cloth and wipe this one down. Be especially thorough on this one as it is the one your hot end will be moving back and forth on at a million miles an hour because you all slice all your projects at a million miles an hour. Have a look 
at how disgusting mine was. Finger on the rail, finger on the hot end, carefully move. Repeat the process one more time. When you are done, go ahead and home the printer by pressing the hamburger symbol and then press the Z home button. Your bed and your hot end are riding their newly cleaned and lubricated rods. And one final step is to rerun the calibrations by pressing the gear icon, the self check icon, selecting input shaping, auto leveling, and pressing start detecting. And there it is. We have cleaned and lubricated the rods on our Creality K1 series printer. It may seem like a real pain in the arse, however, the reality is this process only takes a few minutes and is very much worth your time. You're on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3DRundown.com. And cleaning all the disgusting crud off your Crowley K1 series printer was today's adventure. Or for early adopt, blah. Hey.